Welcome to the Black Sparrow Media Internet Broadcast Network. Listening to Linux in the Hamshack. LHS is a podcast about Linux, open source, and amateur radio for everyone. Now, here are your hosts Russ, K5GUX, Cheryl, W5MOO, and Bill, NE4RD. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. You have tuned in to episode number 510 of Linux in the Hamshack. This episode is our deep dive episode. And it's kind of an in-house deep dive, as it were, tonight. So we're going to be interviewing one of our own. But it's an interesting project and one that I actually found out more about today than in the many, many years that I've known Bill. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's funny when you actually sit down and ask some questions and learn some things, uh, what, what you can find out about stuff. And uh, we're going to elaborate on that and disseminate all of that information to all of you listening tonight. And hopefully you'll be as interested as I was. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and introduce ourselves. Uh, Cheryl, W5MOO, is on assignment tonight. She will not be joining us, but I am Russ, K5TUX. And I am Bill, NE4RD. And Bill is the subject of our deep dive tonight. Well, not Bill specifically, but an organization that Bill represents or heads or, or well, I guess we're going to find out all about that. It's an organization we have talked about on this show before. It's come up many times. It is the K2BSA Amateur Radio Association, which is the official name. Uh, we've just been calling it the K2BSA because, you know, it's short, sweet, and it's the call sign. Of the organization, but the organization actually does interesting stuff. And uh, it's it's stuff that I didn't even realize. I, I had a whole different concept in my head about what the K2BSA was. Um, but with the upcoming Boy Scouts of America jamboree this is what is this the world jamboree or what do you call this thing because there's there's like little ones right but this is the big one right this is the national jamboree it happens every four years right so it's coming up at the end of july and it'll be in the place it's been I don't know, at least the last couple of times right uh in uh west virginia bechtel reserve west virginia and the k2 bsa ara has a sort of a pivotal presence at the Jamboree. But before we get into what the K2BSA does, we'll let Bill expound a little bit about what the National Jamboree is as far as the Boy Scouts of America organization. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, this is the, uh, this is from, of course, the press release from the National Jamboree 2023. Uh, but uh, here's a little blurb of what's going on there. Uh, thousands of scouts, volunteers, explorers, staff, volunteers, and local community members are preparing to move their scouting adventure forward at the Boy Scouts of America's 20th National Jamboree, taking place July 19th through the 28th, 2023, at the BSA's Summit Bechtel Reserve, located on more than 14,000 acres of forested mountains in West Virginia. Typically held every four years since 1937, jamborees are the BSA's largest national events, where since... Its inception, more than one million scouts, scout leaders, and staff have participated in celebration of scouting's commitment to fun, friendship, adventure, diversity, service, and leadership. Scouting's last National Jamboree was held in 2017. Originally planned for 2021, the 20th National Jamboree was delayed two years because of the COVID-19 pandemic. As a result, there's a pent-up excitement around the event. With more than 15,000 youth, volunteers, staff expected to attend the 2023 Jamboree and thousands more likely to attend as day visitors. Quote, this is the scouting's largest event. The 2023 National Jamboree will showcase scouting's mission by combining adventure and leadership development to give youth life-changing experiences they can't get anywhere else, said Tom Pendleton, National Jamboree director for the BSA. Uh, continued, quote, uh, over the 10... Action-packed days, youth will make new and lasting friendships and take part in adventures in the West Virginia wilderness, end quote. So that's kind of uh, the gist of what the National Jamboree is. Um, I've participated in, uh, I was at the 2017 National Jamboree. 
So I'm, I'm quite familiar with the operations there at the Summit Bechtel Reserve. It's such a great location to be at. Um, you know, it's nestled right next to uh, one of our newest national parks, the uh, New River Gorge. Uh, so, I mean, you kind of fixate that in your mind. It's uh, close to uh, Beckley, West Virginia. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a great large event and such a great exposure for amateur radio and uh, youth, which we're always talking about trying to get youth involved in amateur radio. Right. So the Jamboree is actually getting the Boy Scouts of America involved in all kinds of activities, not radio specifically, but uh, everything that has to do with scouting. That's the the largest, I guess, gathering of Boy Scouts in any one place at any particular time. And it's uh, it's all about all of the aspects of, of Boy Scouts of America. But the K2BSA organization actually has a very specific role when it comes to the BSA, and that is promoting and uh, facilitating access to amateur radio. And, of course, there are merit badges in amateur radio and everything in, in the BSA and all of that. So maybe you could touch on a little bit about uh, the history of the K2BSA. Since it's not technically part of the BSA, it's kind of a, it's a separate organization. It's a 501c3 nonprofit that facilitates the aspect of Boy Scouts that deals with amateur radio. Yeah, so uh, let's. Uh, I guess we can kind of go back into into time here, and most of this information, of course, you can find on the K2BSA's website. Um, you know, back uh, back in the olden days, <laughs> in 1919, uh, there was a wireless merit badge that kind of sort of kicked off uh, the BSA's interest in wireless communications. Uh, in 1923, the radio merit badge was introduced and has continued on ever since then. Uh, the first, uh, let's see, we can just kind of skip forward to 1971 when the K2BSA's uh, national license was acquired. And the K2BSA has been participating in the actual uh, National Jamborees, the National Scout Jamborees, since 1977. Uh, prior to that, uh, we had an amateur radio uh, presence uh, back in 1953 with K6BSA and 1957 K3BSA. Uh, 60, 64, so on and so forth. There was other groups that were uh, representing uh, as the BSA call sign. Uh, but the K2BSA has been there since 1977. As a group, and of course, yeah, as Russ had mentioned, we are a separate uh, organization. We are just an amateur radio club um, devoted to, uh, you, know, um, you know, making uh, making the amateur radio accessible to scouts, promoting amateur radio and scouting, whether that be through Radio Merit Badge, uh, um, Jamboree on the Air, uh, National Jamborees, World Jamborees, uh, anything that we can uh, help people with uh, resources to, you know, put scout camps on the air or you know just an outing and you know just bringing an amateur radio with you and using it uh, that's basically what the k2bsa is all about we're just you know we're about supporting radio scouting activities and uh yeah we uh we definitely align ourselves with a lot of the national events and the international events like joda Right, but you're also involved outside of the jamborees and stuff. But um, I guess you can talk a little bit about what the organization, like the different aspects of the organization before we get into this jamboree specifically and, and all the things about the stuff that you're doing uh, coming up. Because, um, you know, your relationship at the jamboree is kind of like as an exhibitor and, a you know, a provider of access to uh, amateur radio uh, equipment and information and education uh, for the Boy Scouts. But you do that uh, the rest of the year, too, not just for, for jamborees when they show up. Right. Yeah. It's not like we uh, we start the club up every four years to <laughs> to run the national jamborees. Although it seems like it, uh, you know, as we finish one national jamboree, we're thinking about the next one and so on and so forth. But yeah, annually we uh, we're, we're an amateur radio club. We have about uh, six hundred plus life members. Uh, there's a, uh, a straight membership fee to join the K2BSA Amateur Radio Association. That's a life membership, and uh, our members, uh, you know, we uh, we promote every year. We promote jamboree on the air. We help. Uh, provide resources for scout leaders and amateur radio operators for, you know, activating the jamboree on the air, how to best do it. Uh, we give all kinds of documentation on uh, how to best uh, plan your event, uh, timeline planning, everything, uh, how to, you know, uh, what are the best ways to succeed at uh, planning your Jota event. So that's uh, pretty much, uh, you know, 
uh, at least a six month activity for us. <laughs> we start talking about Joda at the beginning of the year and uh, we uh, continue to update any documentation that we have on our website to help people with that. Uh, we also uh, work with the uh, AWRL in updating the Jamboree on the Air website uh, uh, that they have provided at the AWRL. So any uh, every year we kind of go in and uh, review any changes that need to be made. Um, our group also works with uh, BSA National to uh, to get and ensure that the uh, the patch is made every year for Jamboree on the Air. So we do have involvement with that. There used to be a, a very large uh, radio scouting committee involved in that. Uh, that has now kind of combined with uh, the, the event being a Jamboree on the Air, Jamboree on the Internet these days. So we have a new hybrid uh hybrid committee <laughs> that's uh that's a little different um but we're still part of that as the amateur radio side and uh, we ensure that uh, the patch every year has amateur radio elements and we we don't forget about the fact that uh you know it is it is a way to get people on the air and uh, we work with the international folks at the uh, world organization of the scouting movement which actually runs jamboree on the air because joda is a uh, joda jodai is a uh, international event it's not specific to the BSA. It is a pure world organization, a scouting movement, uh, international event that the BSA uh, um, follows and uh, uh, participates in. So uh, we work on that as well. Every month we uh, have a, uh, a radio scouting net on uh, Echolink where uh, radio scouters can uh, connect with uh, myself and, uh, and others uh, within the organization uh, to uh, to have that live conversation to talk about uh, you know their upcoming events, what they're trying to do, what they're trying to accomplish, um, how to best uh, strategize uh, doing such. We have a lot of people trying to get their uh, uh, councils and districts and stuff like that involved in a little bit more of amateur radio, and uh, always asking like, how do I how do I do this? How do I get started? Um, so much so that we uh, we really started a uh, a camp scouting committee as well within the group to really talk about uh, getting uh, scout camps on the air. Um, so we're, uh, we're quite busy in all, all aspects of uh, uh, getting amateur radio and, and scouting kind of paired together uh, to get the most exposure for amateur radio out there. And in order to do all of that, you have to form some relationships. And of course, you're also a nonprofit. So how does so so what groups are you guys affiliated with? How do you get support for, you know, providing all of this stuff to to these uh, BSA affiliated uh, scouting clubs and, uh, you know, national troops and all that kind of stuff so who who are you affiliated with and how do you how do you sort of make the things run from the the quote unquote business side <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, you know, like uh, affiliations are probably loose, you know, like as uh, most organizations, we, we try to partner with other organizations that have capability to do to solve problems that we can't solve on our own. So um, and we have worked with uh, ICOM America for, uh, I believe, uh, since 1981, they've been a part of the BSA and uh, the K2BSA operations in some form or another. Uh, they have provided station loans for the uh, National Jamboree operation since uh, 2013. So they've been our sole provider of transceivers. They've provided transceivers for uh, 2013, 2017. We had the World Jamboree uh, in the summit as well, um, which is the World the World Jamboree, uh, which happens anywhere in the world every four years. This this time it's actually occurring in uh, South Korea. Uh, actually like a couple days after this national jamboree, cause we're off cycle due to COVID. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we've been partnering with the uh, ICOM America for, uh, those kind of items. Uh, they also provide things like, you know, band maps and, and other literature and stuff like that, that we can uh, hand out to, uh, to scouts. And they have also provided our QSL cards and, uh, contact cards for the scouts. And, uh, sometimes, uh, I think last, uh, the World Jamboree, they provided a little tokens that uh, we could give to every scout that participated in the event to kind of commemorate the event. This year, we're giving uh, uh, ICOM a sponsored uh, a little what we're calling the Ham Alphabets card, which is a little lanyard card that has the uh, amateur radio alphabet, the phonetics and the uh, Morse code <coughs> of all the uh, letters. So we're uh, we have that as the uh, the annual uh, or the not the annual, but the, this this events give out. 
Uh, we've also uh, partnered with uh, various other vendors to uh, to uh, facilitate a relationship between uh, them them and the, the BSA themselves to provide permanent equipment for uh, the operations at the National Jamboree. At, you know, every uh, every four years, it's kind of hard to kind of go find all new equipment and everything else. And uh, we've been working on these relationships to ensure that uh, there's antennas there, there's rotors there. Um, there's headsets there for the kids so that they can uh, listen to the radio without hearing all the outside noises and stuff like that. So we've been very fortunate to have, uh, I believe MFJ Enterprises provided the headsets, uh, the last few years, uh, or last few events, I always say years, but it's events. <laughs> Uh, we uh, got uh, for the World Jamboree, we got uh, JK antennas involved, and uh, they provided three antennas for us, which are stellar, stellar performing antennas. They provided a, a tri bander, a dual bander, and a uh, and a uh, rotating dipole on 40. And uh, those antennas performed very well, even in the marginal conditions that we had at the World Jamboree. And uh, uh, we had a different call sign for that event, of course. We had the NA1WJ call sign which I was also the trustee of at the time. <laughs> um, and uh, gee, DX Engineering has been a great partner as well. They provided a, a bunch of filters for our HF operations. So we uh, have less, uh, less uh, you know, intermod and stuff like that between the rigs because we do uh, have all the rigs uh, all in the same location <clears throat> within, a, you know, <laughs> 10, 15 feet of each other. And uh, the, the towers themselves, we have, some, um, we have some telephone poles that were mounted at the uh, summit uh, they're about, uh, I'm, I want to say like 60 foot apart each. We have three, uh, three towers, basically three telephone poles that we already have, uh, holes and mounts for, for the rotors and stuff like that for the operation. So that's been really, really good, uh, moving through all those uh, years. Um, and, uh, of course this year we had a, a new partner involved, uh, because we, uh, we, we needed funding and previous years, the BSA has funded our basically our booth, if you want to call it that, our tents that we have uh, and the chairs and the tables and the partitions, the things that make, uh, uh, you know, deploying all the equipment and whatnot uh, possible. Uh, we had, uh, we, we got funded through a grant through the ARDC, which of course we've talked about on this podcast many, many times. And we're uh, very grateful that the K2BSA was able to, uh, to get a grant to fund uh, the those kind of items that uh, in previous years the BSA has funded uh, for us to participate, uh, but this year they we, we kind of got the the true exhibitor experience. <laughs> we, they said, uh, "Yeah, here's uh, you guys. Uh, you guys got to come in and do everything yourself." And it's like, "Oh, okay. Well, we're gonna still gonna do it because we've been doing it since uh, you know 1977 as K two BSA, and uh, funding is not going to be an obstacle for us." So uh, we were, you know, grateful to for them to participate in that aspect and and get us the funding we needed to uh, continue this uh, long history of uh, of uh, demonstrating and participating in such a large large uh, visible event uh, with scouts uh, and youth uh, for amateur radio. And uh, geez, what else we have? Uh, well, the ICOM uh, the ICOM partnership has uh, has kind of grown too because uh, we have the ICOM station loans that we uh, handle throughout the year. Uh, ICOM has provided uh, three, not three, sorry, ten. <laughs> Can't even count. <laughs> ten, uh, ten complete stations uh, out for loan, and uh, these stations have let's see, since uh, 2012 they've been providing these stations. This was part of an agreement that they had with the BSA. Uh, the K2BSA basically provides uh, the application process and handling of uh, ensuring that um, the person who is wanting to get the station loan has involved their scout leadership, including the scout executive, um, the council or the district, depending upon what level of, um, of what level of leadership uh, is involved in that particular event. And they've provided, uh, they have 10 stations that we uh, we can get out for a loan, which uh, they do go out quite often, especially for Jamboree on the air events. Uh, each station is consisting of a, an IC7300 currently, uh, and a, a power supply, a desk microphone, an external speaker, a folded dipole, and all the connecting cables that you could possibly need. And it's all housed in a huge waterproof uh, Pelican case that ICOM will ship directly to the person and then send them a return label and take care of the shipping back. So uh, they've been an amazing, an amazing partner uh, for that since uh, 2012. And uh, we hope to continue that relationship going forward and uh, hope to get uh, these stations out to, you know, needy groups that uh, want to kind of demonstrate 
you know, a full kit and, you know, where it's just not really possible for some groups to kind of facilitate the equipment and stuff like that. All right. Very good. So what what exactly now that you have access to, you know, the vendors and, and the materials and the supplies that you get from the people you partnered with? So what is the K2BSA actually doing as far as the promoting of amateur radio, like within the scope of the National Jamboree or Joda Jody and, and also outside of those events? Okay, so uh, well, for uh, obviously for uh, we'll just kind of do the smaller ones first. The the jamboree on the air, of course, we're we're promoting um, activity on that using both the the nets that we have monthly to kind of talk people about stuff and they that they have questions about the loaning program. We can go over with that uh, on our website. We have all the resources for getting those loaned equipment and stuff for their event. Um, we also reach out to, uh, you know, all kinds of social media stuff to ensure that people are aware the Jamboree on the air is coming up, you know, where they can get the latest patch and what the new patch is and so on and so forth. Um, as for the National Jamboree, well, that's a that's a bit bigger planning task. Uh, we technically start planning the National Jamboree about uh, two years out. So uh, I've been working on this particular National Jamboree since, well, probably since we canceled the 2021 one. Um, but uh, yeah, the last two years, uh, I've, I work on, uh, on, on trying to curate a team together, you know, first starting with leaders, trying to find some leaders that want to get involved in the project and then uh, start working on the logistics of getting members, you know, team members on top of that and uh, trying to get every piece of equipment we can to ensure we can put together a program at the National Jamboree. And what we do at the National Jamboree for the program uh, this year, this time, this particular <laughs> instance, uh, we have a, a demonstration station where we'll have uh, four uh, full-time active stations running, uh, which is a little smaller than what we normally have. We normally have about seven active stations, but uh, this year we had to pare it down a little bit because of size uh, restrictions and uh, population was going to be a little bit smaller than it has been in previous years. Um, we had seven stations at the World Jamboree, but there was about 50,000 scouts, <laughs> just to put that in perspective. Um, this time it's going to be around uh, somewhere between 10 and 15,000 scouts. So you know, we have four full-time stations that will be operating. We have uh, HF uh, running full-time in three of them. Um, and then the one station will be permanently on DSTAR. So we'll be having that because that's always been a pretty effective uh, form of uh, long-distance communication for, uh, for scouts to uh, talk to just anywhere in the world. And uh, we'll also have, let's see, uh, we'll have the radio merit badge classes going on throughout the event. Uh, we're doing uh, two classes a day, and I believe we can take up to about 35 scouts per class, which are pretty large classes for a radio merit badge class. But uh, I'm I'm insured by my team that they can they can handle it. So so uh, that we're going to try to crank out as many scouts as possible that are wanting to uh, uh, wanting to get the radio merit badge. Uh, we're going to try to make it available and uh, get everybody signed up that uh, is interested in signing up uh, throughout the event. So uh, hopefully uh, we'll get uh, hopefully we'll get about you know five four five hundred plus uh, new radio merit badges added this year, which is always a, a good thing to kind of bump up that number of radio merit badges. Um, as for extra events at the National Jamboree, uh, we have uh, we're planning on doing a summits on the air activation. There is a uh, a, a named summit. Uh, there on the property called Garden Ground Mountain. It's uh, for all you soda people out there. It's WV, or sorry, W8V stroke NR dash zero five eight. Uh, we activated it in uh, 20, 2019. Uh, I don't know if we did. Did we do it in twenty seventeen? Maybe twenty seventeen too. I can't remember. <laughs> I know for sure we did in 2019. Um, but yeah, we're going to activate the mountain. Uh, ICOM has provided in their loaner gear this year an IC705 seven, uh, full kit. So it has everything, including the antenna. So we can uh, demonstrate uh, doing uh, uh, summits on the air activation. Uh, we will most likely try to get on satellite. Uh, we have been provided an IC9700 to do that. Um, but uh, unfortunately, my my satellite expert... <laughs> has uh, has dropped out of coming to the jamboree so uh so we'll, due to the small staff uh, we have to kind of put that as a uh, as an optional optional event and we might have to kind of schedule that when when we have enough availability for people because we're really running on uh 
on a thin staff this time around. So it's, uh, it's uh, quite complicated. Um, let's see what else, what else was there in your question? I'm sorry. No, I think that pretty much covered that question, but you have mentioned your staff, your team a few times. So why don't we talk a little bit about them and, and, uh, the tasks that they're taking on? Cause it sounds like it's going to be a busy time for, for the folks from the K2BSA at this particular jamboree. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my, uh, myself, I'm, I'm the team lead and, uh, taking over now the media lead, which was, uh, my satellite guy. <laughs> so, so I have two roles at the, uh, at the national jamboree. Uh, my tech lead is Rick Smith, N6 GSE. Uh, Rick is a, an amazing, amazing guy. I mean, he will uh, he will make it anything work, even if it possibly can't work. <laughs> so uh, we'll be leaning heavily on Rick on the on our uh, on Saturday when we all arrive there on uh, July fifteenth to start uh, building antennas and kind of investigating what they what what we've gotten back from uh, the warehouse, which we're hoping all of our antennas come back. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, Rick Smith will be uh, running the tech team, which uh, is basically himself and myself and uh, a few others that are in the advanced uh, arrival team. Uh, the demonstration team lead will be Scott Hooper, KT0P. Uh, Scott's a, a, a good friend. He's uh, he's up here in Montana, lives up in the in the Kalispell area, and uh, has participated in, in several jamborees before. Was at the World Jamboree in the 2017 with me. So I've good familiarity with scott he's a great uh great leader and a uh a great amateur so uh that's a great resource to have on charge of that team uh the radio merit badge team is led by larry sec n8 q and m uh, another uh another returning uh individual from the radio merit badge team so uh larry's uh put together uh a program and a schedule and everything else to ensure that we can get as many scouts as possible through the event, uh, and, uh, ensure that, uh, ensure that we have enough holes too, because we have to get all those scouts that run through the radio merit badge on the radio and operating as part of their radio merit badge. So he's working in coordination with Scott to ensure that, uh, we, we get enough gaps in the middle of the class so they can get their contacts in. And just in case we got a few extra radios, <laughs> just just in case we have to do some simulated contacts as well through the uh, through the local repeaters that uh, that ICOM has also provided. We have a uh, seventy centimeter uh, repeater and a and a and a two meter repeater on site as well as a as a D star repeater that uh, we'll be using to kind of facilitate any additional contacts that we need to have. Um, and then yeah, I have uh, about seventeen. I'm thinking. 16 or 17 other members, uh, part of the team that uh, are are mixed into the demonstration team. I believe we have 10 people in the demo team and three people in the radio merit badge team. Um, of course, that's full-time equivalents. We have a few half-timers that are coming in the first half of the jamboree, and then I have a couple that are coming in the second half of the jamboree as well. So, but essentially, we're running the whole thing with about, uh, yeah, 16 people full time uh throughout the two weeks so uh quite a small operation um um or well large operation for a small amount of people uh the national or the world jamboree the last time we had 42 staff just to uh put that into a little perspective and i believe the 2017 one we had a about 42 as well so so yeah this has been a been an interesting interesting uh planning event as well as just kind of just seeing what we can do uh there was a lot of questions uh about uh whether we'd be doing uh, amateur radio direction finding um and uh an heiress contact and stuff like that and we just don't have the bandwidth uh in people to actually do some of these extra things i would love to do them and uh, we've definitely been offered the equipment to do ARDF and everything else. It just uh, it just isn't uh, possible uh, with the with the small staff to be able to do those things. Um, and I believe uh, I believe uh, at the World Jamboree we had the Aris contact, which actually worked out really well. But we were unaware that NASA was also involved in another video conference call <laughs> at the same time uh, at the national at the World Jamboree. So it was uh, it was kind of interesting. <laughs> that it's like there wasn't a lot of communication because of our relationship being kind of like an exhibitor relationship where we're sort of outside of the full communication of everybody 
Um, yeah, we do kind of learn about a lot of the other events kind of after the fact or while we're there. So, uh, um, this year is that has not, this time has not been much different. Uh, we have had a couple of groups kind of talk to us about, uh, uh, coordinating uh, people getting on the air and using us as kind of like an Easter egg hunt for the STEM activities. Um, one of the STEM merit badges is uh, working on a, you know, go over here, do this, go over here, do that. And we're one of those events where they come over and they uh, uh, they try to get on the radio, which of course we're going to get them on the radio and get them a contact card. So they'll have a record of doing that. So yeah, it's just uh, it's it's a, it's a big thing, <laughs> it's a big project. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if I'll ever do this again. No, no, just kidding. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot, a lot of work to do uh, on, on top of, uh, everything else. And, and, and I have to pay to be there. All my, all my team members, just so you know, all my team members have to pay to actually be at the national jamboree. So, uh, so they're all vested, vested partners in the game. Uh, there's no, nobody gets a paycheck, no, nothing like that. We all actually have to pay to be there. And, uh, yeah, most of them have been there for multiple, multiple jamborees. I have a handful of new newcomers that this is their first jamboree ever. And, uh, it's my job to basically make it a, a great experience for them as a, uh, as a team member on the uh, Jamboree service team and, uh, yeah, get them to come back in future Jamborees. Cause, uh, yeah, trying to fill the roster every, every time is always, always an exercise. All right. Sounds like uh, it's going to be a fun job for your skeleton crew. Uh, Steve in the chat, KJ five T has questions for you. First one is how many kids would you guess get on the air during the two weeks of Jamboree? Typically, we've done uh, anywhere from about 3,000 to 4,000 scouts on the air. Um, considering the size of this jamboree, I would probably say we're going to be pretty close to the same. Um, we obviously we have less of a footprint uh, and less radios, but uh, I, I, I think that might actually play into advantage um because we'll look well we'll look a lot more active all the time because there won't be this year we have we don't have the extra room in the tent so we don't have uh any extra seating so like everybody will be either at a radio or in queue to get on a radio uh we won't have so many uh mulling around and and stuff like that so so i'm hoping that we can get uh yeah hoping we can get at least three thousand on the air if not more he says 10% of kids getting hooked is good for the hobby. Yes, it, it surely would be if they did. And speaking to that, he also wants to know, will there be a V group there and will you do testing? Uh, everybody asks about testing. <laughs> 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 well, well, you know, why licensing is great and important and everything else. And uh, um, obviously what we're doing is kind of planting seeds to 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 kind of grow the interest in amateur radio. We're not there specifically for licensing purposes. But in Jamboree's past, there has been VE sessions, uh, at least one VE session that sort of happens towards the end of the Jamboree. And uh, yeah, so th there possibly will. Um, we don't put it in our program because it's not it's not what we're there for. Well, that's fair enough. So, so speaking to the topics that we normally talk about on this podcast, is there any way you can link the K2BSA to, to Linux in the ham shack? Do you guys use software that's open source? Do you do uh, anything, you know, along the lines of the normal bounds of conversation we usually have here? Well, like, I mean, everything that the K2BSA does is, is put out there on the internet. So like all the resources we make, or the, all the resources we generate or get, we redistribute and get out to everybody. So we're we're kind of like a facilitator in the open information uh, that's available out there, and also a producer of that information. And we give it all freely, <laughs> freely away. You do not have to be a member of the K2BSA to access any of our resources. Uh, all of them are available on our website. And uh, we, we continue to add to that as we can. And as we generate new documents, like we have some new updates to our um, radio merit badge program, uh, PowerPoint slides, or I guess you can you could probably not use them in PowerPoint, although they have some weird transitions from the old days. <laughs> so we're still using PowerPoint to do it. Uh, I almost tried uh, the LibreOffice version, uh, but uh, this time I guess we're just going to have to go with what we have. Um, so, yeah, everything is available and freely distributed uh, to everybody. So, I mean, in that aspect, yes, we're completely open source with that. Uh, as for computers and software, um, I did have a request to not confuse people and put uh, Linux on everything. <laughs> so... <laughs> 
So we are running Windows on all the computers. Uh, the login application we'll be using is N1MM. Sorry, not a one, not one MM. Sorry, I wish. <laughs> but we'll be using N1MM for our operation just because people are familiar with it. It's easier to train on right now. Um, if uh, you know, if not one MM was just a smidge closer, you know, and and just yeah, everything was there. I would, I would, we would go for it, and we would try not to tell anybody that we switched. You know, we secretly switched the uh, logging software without telling you. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll also be running a. Uh, WFU on the uh, IC seventy three hundreds, just because. Well, you know, sometimes people want to look at something pretty on the computer. Um, we're not doing like external screens or anything this time, just because uh, you know the 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 reason they're there for the contact is to make the contact, and this is what I I'm trying to work into our staff and the demo team and stuff like that, uh, you know, through their leader is that you know we're not there to play with the radio, we're not there to sell the ICOM radio which is a great radio because we've used them several times now and they're, they're, they're just amazing. But like we're there to make sure the contact goes through and that everybody understands exactly how it works. And that really doesn't, the radio is not really part of the equation besides just facilitating that operation. So it's like, I don't want the operators going to pull it and press all kinds of buttons and stuff like that. I literally have the reset uh, flash already set up. So <laughs> If I see a radio that doesn't look like all the other ones, it gets flashed back to the <laughs> flashback to the original original settings because um, I just I just want everything the same, the same. We're we're making contacts. That's what we're doing. I'm trying to get these scouts to talk on the air, and uh, that's that's kind of what we're doing. So we'll be using WFU N one MM. Uh, I don't foresee us doing any digital modes because yeah, in the past uh, FT eight, you know it it. It's interesting for people that understand FT8. It's not as interesting as you would think for the youth. Uh, they actually uh, generally get a kick more out of being forced to talk to on the radio <laughs> by their friends because their friends are like, yeah, dude, it's your turn. It's your turn. And they're like, oh, I don't want to talk on the radio. Oh, you know, you're going to talk on the radio. Oh, OK, I'll talk on the radio. And then you can't get them off the radio. You know, they want to make another contact or whatever. So, like, yeah, getting them to actually engage and talk on the radio is is kind of the suit the the key. And I see the comment on Morse code. We've done Morse code in the past uh, as more of a kind of like an exhibition thing, and it's interesting uh, to see some of the grasp on that. But you need a really really top end CW operator that can sit there and carry on the conversation in his fist and also be talking directly to the scouts and engaging them in what's actually going on. And we did uh, do a little experimentation at the World Scout Jamboree uh, with doing that. And we had a decoder running. I think we used the... I think we use the MRP sixty four one just because it's a it's a little better decoder than FL Digi and it has a really you know it can blow up the the font and stuff like that so they can kind of see the decode coming in even though the operator was telling them exactly what was coming in and then exactly what he was sending and stuff like that um, but I think it's a it's it is a bit of a stretch to do that because it doesn't allow the scouts to actually participate they're more of an observer at that point. And at that, you know, you know, I can show them a PowerPoint that shows them what CW is. So it's uh, it's not really uh, interactive enough, much like FTA. It's not interactive enough. You know, yeah, OK, you can double click something. It's not it's not exciting. Uh, so, yeah, we try to keep it simple and keep it basic, uh, keep it right down to talking on the radio. Yeah, there's other modes like, uh, you know, um, PBSK or something like that. That's more typey talky. Um, but uh, again, that's it's 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 a bit slow and not as fluid that everybody else can participate. That's actually sitting there at the radio at the same time. Because generally we'll have four to five scouts at each radio, so we want to be able to engage everybody uh, at the same time. And if they're all trying to look over at a really tiny screen or whatnot, it's not it's not a very effective thing. So. I, I, mean, I know people do this in small groups and it works out fine, but when you're doing it at a larger scale where you're trying to push through, you know, thousands of scouts, um, it's always best to keep it simple and uh, keep everybody engaged as, as much as you can. All right. Sounds good. Is there, uh, did we, did we cover everything about uh, Jamboree? Cause you've got a couple other topics here that are sort of not Jamboree related, but they're related to, to scouting and radio. 
And I don't know if we need to get to those or if you have something else to, to wrap up on Jamboree itself. Um, I'm just looking at the notes real quick here. I think we covered all of the topics per se. I mean, the, the one thing I do want to say for the general amateur radio community is that um, y- you can participate in this National Jamboree event with us. And how you can do that is listen for the K2BSA calling because we have scouts that want to talk to you and and learn about amateur radio and being a good steward of amateur radio out there on the other end is really key to the success of the operation. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to be on HF and we'll, you know, we'll be on probably, you know, 14290 is like the magic frequency, but it's not the only frequency plus or minus QRM and, and everything else. Uh, we'll be on the higher edges of the general band except for not in the QRP areas, because I'm a stickler on that. <laughs> um, so you, you'll find us on the bands uh, to uh, to find us. Uh, we'll be spotted, I'm sure, all over the place. Uh, we'll also do some self-spotting, so you'll be able to uh, find us there. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's really the, the big the big thing that that we need is we need people on the other end to uh, to talk to scouts and maybe even if you, you've been a scouter in the past to kind of talk about uh, your history in scouting and, and give them a conversation beyond, you know, our normal script, which, you know, these are for, you know, kids that, uh, you know, don't don't really know what to say on the radio. You know, we'll give them questions like, you know, what's your favorite color and blah, blah, blah. You know, where are you? What's the weather like? You know, some of the generic questions that you'll ask. Uh, but yeah, try to engage the scouts in a, in, in a conversation to kind of draw them in and uh that's that's always the key in 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 getting people hooked on the hobby is understanding that uh, uh there's there's more than just you know some bullet points to to share and stuff like that so so that's really what we're we're looking for for the community to participate at this point is uh, really being on that other end of the radio and um we'll of course have everything uh, shared up to uh, Logbook of the World and stuff like that. So uh, if you need a QSL card, uh, we'll be providing QSL cards after the event. There'll be instructions on that and whatnot uh, afterwards. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I would I would really appreciate anybody uh, making some effort to uh, to be around uh, on the radio because we'll be uh, on the air pretty much from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day during the jamboree. Um, yeah. And probably afterwards, too, there's some guys that want to work the station uh, after hours. So expect us on the uh, 20 and 40 in the lower bands in the evenings occasionally. All right. And Steve wants to hit you with one more question. And that is, are you going to do any maker type stuff, kit building, anything like that about uh, hardware? Or is it just about the contacts? Uh, you know, the Radio Merit Badge program does not include building anything because there's already an electronics merit badge that kind of does that. So we don't we don't really uh yeah I would love to do some kit building and stuff like that obviously within the confines of the time frame that we have uh the scouts and stuff like that um you know you probably would want to spend a little bit more time doing that and that's really kind of you know, like I say poking in on the other areas uh, that they can get a, a merit badge for, which would be like the electronics merit badge where they actually build a circuit and stuff like that and probably have some kind of kit. Um, if you look at the uh, Radio Merit Badge program, which is available, of course, on the Internet, um, you can find it on our website as well. Um, it doesn't include that stuff. There's three uh, three components that you can do with the uh, Radio Merit Badge. And one of the components being amateur radio. Hey, hey, that's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> where they learn about you know cue signals you know uh, propagation doing the contact so on and so forth um the second option would be ardf uh, which is amateur radio direction finding which i would love to do that as well however again that's a, a bit of a logistical thing we need a lot more adults involved and stuff like that to actually uh to run that program so uh, we opted to not do the ardf section of that um so that's an option and then the third option is actually broadcast and uh, kind of doing more shortwave listening and stuff like that. Um, and so since that's not really what we specifically do, we're focusing in on the amateur radio side. So that's that's primarily our focus for the operation. All right. Well, I think that kind of gets all the points we have here, at least as far as Jamboree is concerned and getting scouts on the air and what the KTBSA is focused on for this Jamboree and, and generally other events throughout the year, basically getting scouts involved in 
uh, getting the good neighbor operators on the other end to, to make contacts with them and get them interested in radio and all that kind of thing. So what's the what's the SCOTA thing that you've got here? Sure, yeah, that's uh, that's something that we've been working on for years. We had a SCOTA site, a SCOTA.us site that actually allowed people to register their uh, their scout camp activations and whatnot. And it kind of, you know, it's one of those, older applications that uh, kind of eventually just got attacked by uh, any random bot. So we had to turn it off and uh, we decided that, uh, yeah, we want to actually make this, the uh, scout camps on the air program, a, a true ODA and OTA program <laughs> that everybody else has uh, through the original vision of actually, you know, creating an event that, uh, you know, people can like points, you can do a chasing, you can be a activator, a chaser, and so on and so forth. And uh, included in the, the show notes is a link to the uh, press release, which did get some some uh, some motion out there. I think even KB6NU uh, had it on his blog uh, about the scout camps on the air activities. So, uh, yeah, we're trying to to bring that back uh, from uh, from uh, a slow death <laughs> that I put the set the, the site in myself. Uh, so I have a kind of like a, a, a pre build site up there right now, which has uh, the basics that we're talking about. Um, I have to still get the press release information up there, but it's on the K2BSA site uh, regardless. Um, and yeah, so uh, yeah, we'll be on the lookout for more information on that and that coming fully alive. Uh, as we get more volunteers involved in that, I think, you know, primarily we're looking for uh, developers or a developer that has some bandwidth to actually work on the site and then try to integrate some of the uh, the ideas and stuff like that into the application. Um, I have I have minimal bandwidth for that right now, especially now that I'm trying to get the, the National Jamboree and everything else running. So. Uh, so, yeah, after the National Jamboree, we'll see uh, see how that lands. Uh, we're still looking for volunteers for that. And there's been a reach out to uh, get volunteers. There is a, a groups I.O. account for that. There's a Facebook uh, group as well. So uh, if you're interested in getting involved in uh, an ODA program from from kind of the, the start, um, yeah, reach out uh, and get in contact with the, the team. The committee is run by uh, AB5EB, uh, Mike Crownover Jr. Uh, he's our vice president at the K2BSA, and he's been in uh, the lead of the uh, the camp station committee. Or is that right? Camp station? Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> camp station committee. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, they're also looking at uh, also doing some funding for uh, putting permanent station uh, camp stations on the air uh, throughout uh, throughout the U.S. I think they're going to start with a a couple of uh, um, stations that uh, they're familiar with to kind of, you know, really work out all the bugs in uh, funding and uh, documentation and all the legal stuff that you need to have for uh, having a permanent station at a location, um, which is quite more complex than most people think <laughs> you know you just throw a radio and antenna there and you walk away from it it's like no it doesn't quite work that way uh so yeah there's a lot of a uh, lot of stuff to that and the committee's done a great job on documenting exactly how it should work and uh, the next step is the committee's kind of putting that together as uh, a reality and seeing how their theory works in reality and then on the side we're also you know building this uh camp stations on the air this skoda program uh, fully out so people can start participating in that and creating again more activity with the amateur radio community and scouting all right well that's probably as in-depth as any topic we've ever covered <laughs> so, but uh it's very a, it's amazing good. when we know what we're talking about right yeah, <laughs> I know. <Sort> of. <laughs> yeah so the length of the episode determines our knowledge of uh x topic yeah <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. Anything else uh, we need to touch on here? I, I'm looking down through the bullets, and I think we hammered them all pretty, pretty good. But yeah, I think so. I think so. I'm looking forward to uh, to being there. I'm I'm leaving in a few days, so <laughs> I'm still packing everything and uh, ensuring that I I have everything that I need. I'm I'm just hoping that uh, I'm hoping that I I have everything. Otherwise, uh, Beckley and uh, you know Home Depot and Walmart will see me see a lot of me on uh, Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> uh very good well uh have fun out there in west virginia and i i totally missed the opportunity when you were introducing like the the event and talking about the scouts in the fourteen thousand acres in the woods of west virginia uh not having uh some banjo playing in the background but 
may, maybe next time. A little deliverance <laughs> or something, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Going down the new river gorge. Dun, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> All right. So anyway, that is, uh, I guess, everything you ever needed to know about the KTBSA and uh, the Boy Scouts of America National Jamboree, which, you know, happens every four years normally, you know pandemics yeah. notwithstanding uh <laughs> under normal circumstances yeah, yeah we're hoping that they re-trigger which which offset we're in because i mean this is not uh it's not good to have the national jamboree the same year as the world jamboree because i lost a lot of my available staff to the world jamboree because you know you know do you want to go to west virginia or do you want to go to south korea hmm <laughs> 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 yeah exactly all right well very good so that's all the information about that resource links and everything that we've talked about will of course be in the show notes and uh if you hear the scouts on the air in the next couple of weeks um you know definitely make contact with them i'm sure they'll enjoy it and with that i guess we're going to go ahead and move on to this announcement here i guess i'll read this because you've been doing a, an awful lot of top talking so <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine, but uh, I'll go ahead and read this uh, sort of uh, extensive press release. Okay, what happened to my mouse? My mouse is freaking out. Dang it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, read this uh, lengthy press release from from Erica, presumably, yeah. uh, 4Z1UG, who's talking about the QSO Today Virtual Ham Expo, which is now the QSO Today Academy. After six successful expos, the QSA Today Virtual Ham Expo is undergoing a transformation and evolving into the QSO Today Academy. You may recall the QSO Today Virtual uh, QSO Today Virtual Ham Expo. Yeah, they, they needed to change that anyway, just so you didn't have to say that. Uh, was initiated during the peak of the COVID nineteen pandemic, providing a unique platform for amateur radio enthusiasts to connect and learn from the comfort of their homes. Now, with the launch of the QSO Today Academy, we are taking this experience to a whole new level. The inaugural event will take place on the event of September 9th and 10th, 2023. Time will, this time, will be utilizing the SQL.io video presentation platform uh, for the sessions. Additionally, the Academy will introduce video roundtable discussions, allowing you to engage with presenters and subject matter experts, further expanding your knowledge and understanding. At the heart of the Academy are the presentations on amateur radio. Each session will feature live questions and answers following the presentation, giving you the opportunity to interact directly with the speakers. All presentations will be recorded for later viewing, ensuring that you can revisit and learn from them at your own pace. These recorded presentations will be made available exclusively to Academy members. Oh, look, there it is. There's the money right there. <laughs> uh, moreover, it's not we, about the money. It's about the money. Yeah. <laughs> moreover, we are delighted to announce that all the valuable, valuable content, see valuable content, membership. Yeah, yeah, it's all about the money. Uh, from our earlier expos, which has not been previously published, will be accessible to Academy members, of course. This comprehensive library will serve as a treasure trove of knowledge for both seasoned amateur and newcomers alike. As a token of our appreciation, all podcast sponsors will automatically receive Academy membership. Oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> so go subscribe to the QSO Today podcast and gain access to all the resources at the Academy. We are committed to providing you with a seamless experience as you transition from the Expo to the Academy. Tickets for Academy Weekend will be available for purchase, granting you a 30-day access period. This extended access period will enable you to explore the presentations and delve deeper into the world of amateur radio. So, there you go. Something else to spend your money on. Speaking of which, my AWRL membership has lapsed and I must re-up it. <laughs> so... It's easier uh, when you're a life member because then you don't have to think about it anymore. Yeah, I'm not going to throw out a thousand bucks or whatever it is like for that. I'll just... Yeah, yeah. Well, I joined a long time ago, so yeah, it wasn't a thousand bucks when I did it. So I'm not sure it's a thousand bucks now, but I think it's close. Yeah, it's probably pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, check out the QSO Today Academy uh, coming up in September. And uh, with that, we only have one thing left to do, and that's talk about our new subscribers, supporters, and live participants from tonight. Uh, on Facebook, Gordon Peterson joined us. On Discord, we had Pretty OK and Matt24. On Instagram, K1MBK. On Mastodon, WC6Q. Uh, on the mailing list, we had K1KHU. And in the chat, I think I've got everybody listed here. We had Don KB2YSI, Steve KJ5T, Stacy KB7YS, Tony K4XSS, Winston KD2WLL, and Ted WA0EIR. So 
that was everybody from the show tonight. So thanks again for everybody showing up and being part of the program one way or the other, social media, supporter, live listener, however it is that you interact with Linux in the Ham Shack. We appreciate each and every one of you. If it weren't for all of you, we wouldn't do the show at all. But with that, we'll go ahead and wrap this one up. We'll say have a good evening, good day, whatever it is when you're listening to us, and have a great week, and we hope to tune in next time around. So for the absent, Cheryl, W5MOO, I'm going to sign off on episode 510 of Linux in the Hamshack. I'm Russ, K5TUX. And I'm Bill, NE4RD, 73. Thank you for listening to this episode of Linux in the Hamshack. LHS is a community-sponsored podcast. Our website is located at lhspodcast.info. You can support the podcast by visiting the LHS Patreon page at patreon.com stroke LHS podcast or by using the contribute list on the homepage. We have a presence on Discord, Facebook, IRC, Twitter and YouTube. You can also drop us an email at info at lhspodcast.info or leave us a voicemail at 1-909-LHS-SHOW. That's 1-909-547-7469. Visit the online LHS merchandise store at shop.lhspodcast.info for fun and fashionable show-themed merchandise. Until next time, remember to always heed your hedonism.